All right, this one's pretty straightforward. Combinator. Let's name it. Pitch bendy. Oh, it sounds adorable now. Now let's make a mixer. And a maelstrom. Yes, I'm going to do this whole tutorial with a condescending voice. Now, Maelstrom is pretty good for this effect because of its useful one-shot option. I'll add in some notes now and stop with the voice. Okay, so in our verse block I've just made, I've put in these two notes for the pitch bend synth and I've just looped them so we can hear this. So firstly, if we take a listen, that's absolutely nothing like what we want. So let's initialize the patch and make first both oscillators on Sawtooth 16. Yep, Sawtooth 16 there, and move the index along to a different point on both ones. We're gonna have Sawtooth 16 on this one as well, and turn it on. If you have it slightly different on both of them, it'll just make it a more pronounced difference when we pan the two oscillators either side of the stereo field, and that's what this spread dial here does, so let's turn that up to full. Taking oscillator A to the left and B to the right. Now let's take a listen. Okay, bring both down an octave. And let's have a play in the mod A section up here. And that one shot option I mentioned. Turn it to sync and one shot. So it's in time with the music. Rather the rate allows us to make it in time. And the one shot means it just happens the once at the start of the synth effect. And we're going to turn the pitch down here all the way down to minus 64. And the rate to one quarter. Turn the wave here to curve 9, this one, a nice exponential curve down to that midpoint, and now take a listen. Now we're starting to get somewhere. What this is doing is that every time the note triggers, the pitch is going from really low down, since the minus in this pitch is inverting this wave, otherwise it would start from really high as you can see in the little image and it's following that wave shape until the pitch returns to normal. Now it's a bit weedy on its own, so we're going to right click and duplicate the devices and tracks. Hit tab to make sure it links up from the audio, oh, from the main output rather. We're going to go into audio in two and take these both down an octave on the second Maelstrom instance. And now take a listen. Now let's bring down that higher one, just so this lower one is a little bit more prominent, but then you've got the high end there, just giving it a bit more top. Now we're going to add some reverb as a nice little touch. So right click, create RV7000 reverb on this mixer, and that automatically links up to the aux send and return. So let's dial that in just a little bit. Below half. something like that. You can get away with quite a lot of reverb when you're not using the synth too much because it just comes across as an effect. And then we're going to EQ it as well. So right click on the mixer and create M class equalizer. And because we've already got an effect in there, it automatically connects it up. So it goes in between the mixer and the combinator rather than being an insert effect like the reverb. So we're going to bring up around 3.5 kilohertz. Hold shift to get more accuracy and a nice wide Q. And take a listen as we take it up just by about four decibels. Just brightens it up. And if you're not a fan of that low end, we're just gonna notch that out just to show you how. Bring that to 400 hertz. And I don't know why I'm saying we, because I am just one person. So minus nine decibels there. And take it down to about 3Q just to catch all of it. So without that, and with it, you can hear that it's notching out that kind of low, it almost sounds like a sine synth. Hiding down the bottom there. Depending on whether you want to have a full sound or not, you might want to leave it in there. And there we go. Lastly, today we have a big bass pad for the bridge, so join me in part three for that.